Another disease which affects the immune system is AIDS. Now AIDS actually stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. It is called acquired because it is obtained in the lifetime. The disease is developed in the lifetime. It is not congenital. And it is called as a syndrome because the disease is manifest in a group of symptoms. Now, the AIDS we all know is caused by HIV. And this was first reported in USA in 1981. And since then, it has spread all over the world causing about 25 million deaths. This was isolated and identified by Professor Montagnier of France as well as Professor Gallo of USA. First, it was called as HCLV3, that is Human Cell Leukemia Virus 3, and it was later called HIV in 1986 by International Committee of Viral Nomenclature. Children, HIV consists of two different types. We have HIV-1. In this, the pathogen contains eight genes, whereas HIV-2 contains nine genes, and that is found only in Africa. Coming to the structure of the virus, children, as you can see, this is a retrovirus, a spherical retrovirus, having a core of two single-stranded RNA. As you can see, there are two single-stranded RNAs. Besides that, it has the enzyme reverse transcriptase. This is responsible for the transcription of DNA from RNA. Over that, you can see two coverings of proteins. The inner covering is called the P24 and the outer covering is the protein 17, as you can see. Besides that, it is covered by an envelope which is made up of lipid and this has knob-like glycoprotein spikes. You can see the glycoprotein spikes refers to GP120 and GP41. Now we will talk about the mode of transmission of this disease. The most important and most common is the sexual contact. So persons or individuals having multiple sexual partners are at a high risk. The second mode of transmission is through the transfusion of contaminated blood and blood products of infected persons. So children, all those patients who require blood transfusions are at a high risk. The third mode of transmission is sharing needles. Like in the case of intravenous drug abusers. So children, these drug addicts are at a high risk. Lastly, the mode of transmission is transplacental. That is across the placenta and even from the milk. So children born to HIV mothers are at a high risk. There is a time lag between the infection and the appearance of symptoms and this is found to be a period of about 5 to 10 years. Now let us talk about the mode of action of this virus. Looking at this diagram you can see the virus enters children the macrophages or helper T cells. The macrophages in fact are called the HIV factories. The virus can attach to the helper T cells by means of the T4 or CD4 sites. Now what are these? These are antigen receptor sites on the helper T cells to which the HIV sticks by means of the glycoprotein spikes. So whether it enters the macrophage or the helper T cell children, 
only the viral RNA enters the cell. The coat or the envelope remains outside as you can see in the diagram. On entering into the host cell, the viral RNA undergoes a reverse transcription to form viral DNA. This viral DNA, also called as the copy DNA, will now integrate into the host DNA and it will direct it to produce virus particles. And you can see in the diagram how a number of these viruses are going to be produced and finally they will be released out to attack more and more cells so that in course of time there will be a decrease in the number of macrophages and remarkable decrease in the number of helper T cells. Children, you know helper T cells are responsible for the overall regulation of immune system. It is these cells which are going to basically activate the B as well as the T lymphocytes. So when there is a decrease in the number of these cells, obviously you can realize the impact. The body is going to be now very susceptible to any infective agent. So a number of infections can now attack that susceptible person. These are called as opportunistic diseases. So the patient can show a number of children diseases. Like he can start suffering from pneumonia, he can start suffering from tuberculosis. Besides that, he will show fever, he will show diarrhea, he will also show a tremendous weight loss. That is why children AIDS is often called as slim disease. It will also result in rashes, ulcers over the body and may finally lead to brain damage. Now, death can basically occur due to any of the diseases which attack. And why they attack? Because of the collapse of the helper T cells. Now, we will talk about the various tests and the treatments involved. The test for detecting AIDS is the ELISA test, that is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, while the confirmatory test is the Western blot test. Children, with respect to treatment, we find that there is still no cure for AIDS. However, the different drugs which are taken are mainly antiretroviral drugs. These are taken to prolong life but death will eventually occur. The first drug to be developed was Zidovudine, also called as AZT. AZT actually stands for azizose didioxythymidine. That was the first drug. Besides that, didanosine has also been used very much. Also, reverse transcript in inhibitors are effectively used drugs so that if there is no reverse transcription, the viral RNA cannot change to viral DNA and hence it cannot become a part of the host DNA. Finally, children, we can say that Prevention is therefore the best option because there is no actual cure. So to prevent the disease, it is very important that the people must be aware of it because the saying that don't die of ignorance should not hold true. People should not suffer from AIDS because they are not aware of how it is spread. Therefore, it is very important that agencies like NACO, that is the National AIDS Control Organization, various NGOs in India, as well as all over the world, WHO, they have an intensive program, basically, to increase the awareness. Again.